Well, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be applying this Laminex gun smoke tint to our headlights. Um, these new headlights we purchased a little while ago, they're aftermarket. Um, and we want to, of course, just make it a bit more stealthy. We should have a lot of excess small pieces, so we're going to do these side markers. And depending on how much we have left, we're going to be doing the tail lights. We are also going to be doing the fog lights as well. We don't want to leave those out. You're going to need a few things. Um, if it is cold, which it is today, it's about five degrees Celsius, you'll need a heat gun. Uh, you can use a hairdryer, but it sort of just blows the film around more than heating it up. You need a spray bottle for cleaning your headlights, tail lights. Um, as well as when you do your squeegee application. Um, so you can get these on Amazon for a few quid. You of course need the tint film. This is 48 inches long. As you can see, I've got the rest of it in here. Uh, and then finally, you'll need uh, razor blades. These are craft knives. Look what's also arrived, our crash helmets. So we've got one each for when we go on a track day, which is booked for about a month and a half's time. So make sure you guys uh, subscribe so you don't miss that video as well. Okay, so we're gonna start on the driver side headlight. You'll also need a hard card. Uh, you can use the squeegees. Um, but a lot of people have said using a card is a lot better, it just helps apply the pressure a bit more evenly. I'm not using an old bank card, um, just because I don't really have any lying around, and plus you have the raised letters and numbers, so this is all flat. So we washed the car very recently anyway, but first thing you want to do is wash your headlight or whatever you're going to be tinting a few times. So just use your spray bottle, spray it a few times, clean it, clean microfiber towel or cloth. The adhesive on the back of the uh, tint film is going to stick to everything. So if you have dust or dirt particles, just clean it a second time, um, it's going to stick to those rather than the actual headlight and that's what causes it to lift um, a lot quicker. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit um, like slightly damp, which was good. So the sheet I bought, as I mentioned, was 48 inches. I've cut it in half. So we have um, 24 inches either side. And that should be just big enough for each headlight. And then using the excess, we'll trim it and do the fog lights and the smaller bits. So let's just make sure. We'll clean it again in a second. Anyway. That's over there. Okay, so if we stretch it, we're just about good enough. Because I'll put the backing on that one, just clean it one last time. What you want to do is before you just take this off, just give it a very light mist. So we're talking one or two sprays, just one, two. And let's just, so uh, when you put the tint film on, you can still move it around, it doesn't stick. A lot of people have said as well online, it's good if you spray your fingers. So I'm actually just gonna do that very quickly. Um, and that's just so again, so your the oils from your fingers and your hands um, just don't go all over the tin film and it doesn't stick to your fingers. It's basically just doing the same thing, it's just lubricating it. You just wanna lay it, the sheet on there. How it's going to go. See, that's roughly how it's going to go. Um, then you get your heat gun. If you have a, a proper heat gun, just turn the setting down to the lowest heat. Give it a sec to warm up. If the heat is too high, you're just going to shrivel uh, the film and you can actually rip it like it um, shrivels and then just melts. So you don't want to do that. So you want to start on the biggest edge first and push all the bubbles and water out. Because we sprayed the water underneath, you can lift it, put it down again, and move it around. So you can see, just brush the uh, any bubbles um, towards the edges, so off the piece that you're trying to apply the film to. Put your hand at a safe distance just to make sure like if you're burning your hand you're going to burn the film as you guys can see there's a few air bubbles like here 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 they are fine the manufacturer laminax have even said there'll be air bubbles there'll be sort of water streaks underneath which you can see um, that's all fine. These should go away in a few days because it um, sort of has pores in the film which allow the heat to dissipate and the air to get out. Um, so that is all fine. Worst case scenario, if it's been a few days and you still have these air bubbles, you just get a needle and you just poke it um, and it sort of has this technology inside the film where it'll, it'll find like the needle hole and just sort of cover it up again. What you want to do next is you want to start trimming. Um, you can either use a blade or you can use a scissor for like these bigger parts. 
but to get your fine trimming you will need to use a blade okay so i was just using the heat gun there just to find the edges i mean you can feel the edges anyway so it's trimming time now with your body lines you're going to have a slight gap as you can see here um, just like little gaps around so you want to sort of put the razor in there and just follow the lines uh, leave yourself a little bit of excess around all of the uh, headlight or tail light um, and that way you can sort of just tuck it in a little bit okay. so that's the trimming done just take off all of that all the uh, excess this side turned out very well and we'll just do the final uh, adjustments and tucking it in so here you can see we didn't do enough but if, as i mentioned we need to get some weather stripping um, it would have been better if i did um, lift the bonnet for this one so for the other headlight we are going to do that because uh, then you can sort of trim it up to here you can see where i did cut the headlight so that's why again you need to be really careful we have these uh, edges that aren't properly set down so we're just going to use the heat gun with the card and just get them all tucked in it has come out nice um, there are a lot of air bubbles um, there weren't this many at the beginning when we were originally applying like the whole sheet i assume it's because i kept heating it up and not pushing all of them out um, I'll also insert a few shots of the comparison between the one that we've just done and the uh, passenger side. So I'll do the passenger side now um, and I'll put that on a hyperlapse just because it's going to be the exact same thing. Of course with the bonnet up this time because I wasn't very clever not using the bonnet. And then we make a start on the fog lights and anything else we can, uh, we can give it a try. So the passenger side is done as well. Uh, you can see straight away that there's a, a lot more larger air bubbles. So sort of all of this, you can see. There's some here, there's some there. Not too sure how they got there. I think again, it's just like when I heat the film, it expands. Um, and then if I don't stretch it and press it, it just expands and then just stays there. So it creates a bubble. Um, you can see again, I did cut into the headlight a bit, which is fine because you're not going to see this. Um, and as you can see, the bonnet is open, so I did tuck it in a lot more here. So when the bonnet is down, it'll create a better finish. Um, on this piece, I did, you can see a tiny bits here where I didn't, where I basically took too much off. Um, and that's only because I thought I cut into the bumper. Over here, you could see as well that I was struggling to get a fold out. So I'm going to see how this sets. Worst case scenario, I'll just peel it back, heat it and try to finish that. Bottom came out great as usual. Um, there's a tiny little fold here but again that should set over the next day or two so let's see how it looks with the bonnet down it's looking really good I'm really happy with that um, again we're gonna get the weather stripping in here uh, and as you might have seen as well in the hyperlapse be careful with your heat I was turning the heat up because I was getting a little bit impatient it is getting colder and colder film did actually sort of catch fire a little bit um, and then break yeah, so I've got the fog lights out. Um, I needed to get them out to change the bulb. Um, and these take about two minutes to get out anyway, so I thought it would be a lot easier. And I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is if you can actually get the pieces that you're wrapping off the car. Um, and then same process as before, just grab your card. Um, you can use some heat if you need to, but this will be a lot easier than the headlights. As you can see, you can sort of fit the blade in the gap. Let's try to do that. I made a little mistake here. I actually cut too much away. As you can see up here, the, the lens does curve or the glass does curve. So I cut too much away. I thought you could sort of cut there, but you need to come from the top and cut in there. So at least I know that for the next one. So let's get some heat on it and cut using that line. And there we go. So again, any air bubbles will come out over the next few days uh, naturally. If not, you can always just pop them.
Right people, so as you can see we've still got the uh, tints on the front headlights. Um, I'm actually going to be removing these because we were driving around last night in the country roads where there's no like street lights um, and I could barely see anything. So what I'll do is I've taken a few clips of the uh, before and after. The car doesn't feel safe to drive. Um, I'm not sure if the the tint is too dark. So some people with OEM Xenon headlights um, have said that the Gunsmoke Laminex tint is all good. You can still see you have good light output. We still have decent light output. It's just that the brightness has gone down. So they're, they're much dimmer. Um, the hotspot right in front of the car is still very good. Um, but all of the surrounding area, which is basically where you need it when you're driving, um, that's no longer visible so it may be a bit of an exaggeration um, but to me when I had my full beams on with the Laminex gun smoke on um, it was around the same light output as just having my headlights on without the Laminex okay, so you can see I've taken out the lights we're gonna redo them um, three out of the four have Laminex on them but again we're not happy with the finish so this is gonna be the start of the video I did record a whole video um, putting this Laminex on but again I'm not happy with the finish um, it's also good because I get to clean out all this grime and crap um, that builds up around the brake uh, lights. One or two of them were decent, but you can see areas like this, hopefully it comes out, it's just not a very clean finish, especially around this edge. Um, you can see it's sort of come off a little bit as well because I didn't put enough. So that's why I got them off the car again. It took about, realistically, about 10 minutes. One thing I will say, this adhesive is bloody strong. We were trying to take them off the headlights the other day. It is strong, it bonds very well. So I've got no doubts um, about when we do this properly that it's gonna stay on. Look. It's good to use your fingers on the corners. Um, and it doesn't need to be perfect because remember a lot of this we will be chopping off. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of excess here um, and it makes it a lot harder to work with. So from the front, I mean, obviously we've got a few little bubbles which we can take out, um, but it is looking much cleaner from the front compared to before because we're not having to trim and be careful of the car's paint when we're trimming. As you can see, it came out way better. Look at the finish from the front. I know there are still some air bubbles, but these should clear. Uh, push most of them out. Just look for points on your car like this where I put the razor or the blade into and just cut along just to get a nice consistent finish. There's no point doing all the hard work, paying for the, the film, doing all the hard work on putting this on, getting it all nice and then trimming too much off and that's what we just did before. And that's why I've had to spend another 50 quid getting another set of film. Yes. so we're all done now everything's bolted back in uh, just showed you a comparison as well I'm much happier with the finish um, of course it's not a professional job but I'm really happy with it just with a little bit of light and then with a lot of light you can still clearly see through it so I'm very very happy with the result it looks so much better you can it's a good comparison under the light you see the light then the dark in the dark you can't see anything and that's just how we wanted it um, but of course when I do brake and switch on the car, 
you can see what you need to. So let me know your thoughts down below. Um, you can see I put some laminex on the rear badge as well, just for the time being. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Are you going to do this to your car? Laminex have quite a few different variations on colour um, and tint levels. So let us know if you're going to do any. Don't forget to tag us in any before and after pictures. Or if you've already got this done, tag us on Instagram, Facebook. We have some really big plans for the car over the next few months. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, we have a track day booked for the 1st of March. That will be my first ever track day. We've got our helmets. We've got everything ready. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We'll see you guys in the next video.